nesting in a, a valley high up in the Andes is Quito, capital of Ecuador. And the Scientific Exploration Society team of some 20 people has come here to assist the Kofan people who live in the northern part of the country. There are only 1,200 of them in all, and we are going to assist one group way in the east at a little village called Zavalo, uh, where there are only 120 of them. They've suffered over the years from pollution caused by oil in the early oil exploration of that part of Ecuador. And they are poor people, but intensely proud. And one of their greatest needs is clean drinking water. And so with the assistance of Just a Drop and also with the Visit USA Association of the United Kingdom, we are going to install a clean water system. We're also helping them with medical and dental aid, where we are equipping their school with books and we're assisting them in the setting up of an eco-tourist center because they've got to become self-sustaining. They're hunter-gatherers and they have few trades to offer and few ways of making money other than by showing people who are interested the incredibly magnificently beautiful area of eastern Ecuador where the tributaries to the Amazon flow down through the jungle fringed rivers towards the Atlantic many thousands of kilometers away to the east. But we look across the roof of the rather picturesque University of San Francisco and in the grounds of that is a fine statue of um, the conquistador Francisco de Oriana, the man who by accident discovered the Amazon. Of course he didn't have much choice because having got on it uh, on a raft he couldn't turn back. And in fact, he went all the way to the mouth of the river on the Atlantic, thousands of kilometers on, and eventually across the Atlantic to report to the King of Spain before being sent back all the way to South America uh, to get on with his work. The uh, lorry is here with all the kits and everything on, and as uh, it is, we have another vehicle coming with us tomorrow. general security, sort of looking up and down and watching for anyone who might just suddenly pick up a box and walk off it. Say hello to me. Come on. That's better. Come on. You better be looking as if... Come on, Lucy. You're going to do your little jiggle. Wow. Aren't there a few more? Where's everybody else? They've gone by train. <laughs> They've gone by train. You're going to miss the bus. Hi Roy, what is you? Good morning, John. Four masters, four masters going with the. Uh... Oh, good. This is your week. Good morning, sir. Five, 
The stores for the water project that's supported by Just a Drop uh, have now arrived at Chorizo and uh, are being unloaded onto the large Kofan uh, canoe. Uh, uh, they've got um, a large quantity of pipe and uh, a motor to uh, drive the water from the source through the pipe and uh, uh, various filters and up into the tower and from there it will be distributed down around the village. I understand that the Kofan have actually put the pipes in for the distribution. So what we have to do is to connect um, the source of water, which is about 400 meters from uh, the village uh, to the tower uh, and of course put in a pump to get it up to the top of the tower. Kofan, of course, need fuel uh, for their boats, and we shall need fuel for the pump that is going to drive the uh, water system. So this has been brought down uh, from uh, Lago Agreo and is now being uh, loaded onto the large canoe uh, with not too many passengers around, as it's rather more lethal gasoline. There are something like uh, 660 gallons of fuel for the expedition. Uh, plus, of course, the two-stroke uh, uh, self-mixing oil that uh, we need for the outboard motors. Having left the uh, hotel in the Lago Agrio at 7 o'clock this morning, we've made good time and uh, the boats are waiting for us. We've now got all the stores on board. One slight hiccup, the Kofan had left the spades behind at the last village, so we've had to send back for those. But Mel and uh, uh, we'll bring those up uh, with the water boat, and they'll catch us up at the first village where we shall be stopping to give out some medical supplies and school books. And we're hoping uh, to get to uh, Caballo uh, at about uh, probably four or five o'clock tonight. water supply stores that have come all the way over the Andes uh, and uh, they're now coming in to Zabalo having had a long journey and it looks so they're all Mel and Joel uh, have been guarding them with their lives all the way down here comes the uh, filter
an anaconda we just caught. Okay. 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 Oh, that's incredible, girls. That is incredible. Well done. Right. Pillar is at a shutdown yet, um, Roy, or have you got them all opened up? <laughs> There's the technical word. Oh. There's a queue. And this is a good example of how these Kofan indigenous people live. They've been living in this village for, as far as we know, about 20 years. They've come from upstream to set up a new community. And they live a pretty, a pretty basic life. <laughs> now we're at the community garden where Don Rizzo is going to plant some yucca and plantains that he's uprooted from elsewhere uh, and he's now going to put them in new soil here. It's very encouraging to see the attitude of the Kofan uh, towards conservation. And uh, uh, after the initiative of uh, Randy Borman, they started this uh, turtle conservation project. And uh, they breed these small turtles and then reintroduce them into the rivers. We've noticed, uh, as we've been going around the rivers in the vicinity, quite a few markers where they've been putting the small turtles back in. This means to say that their food supply is likely to be sustained for years to come. In sight of uh, a couple of large uh, frogs, they may even be toads, I'm not sure, uh, where they appear to be mating uh, quite quietly, sitting there ignoring all the turtles and everything else going on around them. The water tower was put in by the municipality but of course uh, there's no way at the moment of getting water into the tank at the top and that is what we're doing we are bringing the water from a creek about 400 meters away uh, pumping it up into the tank and then it will flow down from there into a distribution system that will go around the village uh, they have various uh, other methods of getting water but nothing sufficient to provide the whole needs of the community and also of course they are thinking now about the ecotourists they're hoping to bring in to make their economy sustainable. Anaconda! Anaconda. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, here we are following the, uh, the black anaconda, as it's called, uh, the pipeline going through the jungle uh, from the village now towards the source. bad. We've got um, readings of 50 parts per million of, of um, petroleum hydrocarbons, which might be to do with the organic matter in the water, but um, either, either way we've got the filters to, to deal with it. What do you think of it, Beth? Yeah, there was, um, the, the banks around there are quite steep. We've found a spot where we can probably sit the tank. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not looking too bad. A bit cloudy, but otherwise okay. And Julian, you think it would be better to put the pipe on the surface if possible? 
Well, it seems to me, looking away over to my left, to my right there, that it's going to be a hard job to bury the trench with all the roots and the ground also undulate. Now we are at the uh, bank of the creek where um, uh, Rubin has installed the intake uh, tank. From there, the water has been pumped up uh, by the petrol pump and it's been driven along this giant pipe that the Kofan call the giant anaconda and all the way uh, to the village, about uh, 350, 400 meters to the tower. The water is being pumped up now from the creek uh, and has arrived here at the uh, metal tower that was put up earlier uh, by the Kofan and from here it comes down in this pipe uh, into the sand filter. <clears throat> now this sand filter uh, takes out the coarse sediment and then the next step is it comes down to a disc filter which is for the finer sediment. And from there, it comes up his pipe, so two options, so you can clean one whilst the other is in operation. Uh, it comes through here, and you've got a corrugated cardboard filter, which takes out the very fine sentiment, sediment. And uh, then on to the last one here, which is the carbon filter, and that one uh, is for the hydrocarbon uh, to be taken out as well. And then finally, you come to the chlorine container and this uh, puts in the chlorine which of course purifies the water. We haven't put too much in because if we do it will taste pretty horrible and we'll probably poison the people. So to start with, Julian has just said put in one tablet and let's see how that goes. And then from this point the pure water comes out down the pipe and on into the village. And it's all thanks to Just a Drop uh, and the sponsors, uh, the Visit USA Association in Britain, uh, that we've got this system now working uh, in uh, Cavallo. Now the Kofan have long been trying to attract ecotourists to the area and they've built uh, uh, four uh, simple uh, two-bedroom huts on stilts, uh, thatched huts, and uh, they're putting screens around the windows to cut down the insects. Uh, I'm afraid it's a long task because the insects can get in through all sorts of holes in the roof. And behind the huts, uh, there's a shower block for two showers and two loos, really quite, uh, quite neat. Um, and uh, there are mattresses on the beds in the huts and a little bit of furniture. Um, it's a good effort. The uh, Adjoining the huts, there is a, a dining room and a kitchen. And we're using it as a store at the moment. And they're just putting up more screens on this to help keep the insects out. Um, uh, this is quite a substantial building. Uh, it's reasonably waterproof. We've had a bit of water coming through the roof, but uh, the Kofan have come to and repaired that. Uh, the area has got some insects. Uh, which cause a little bit of a problem, uh, biting at people. We've also had one quite large snake, about two and a half meters, that appeared from under Elodie's tent, but we worked it out that it was non-venomous. Yeah. What is the diagnosis? And um, so really, you, you can tell him the baby teeth needs to be taken out, really. Oh, okay. So, wonderful. But we, we ought to have permission from his mother for that. Oh, yeah, because he's not... It's protocol, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So what's his name? What's his name? The redecoration of the loo and shower block has fallen on Lucy and Mel, 
uh, who are here in their uh, typical uh, painting and decorating clothing uh, in this hot climate. And uh, apart from a few spiders and creepy crawlies that are coming up and down the wall whilst they're uh, trying to paint, uh, they're getting on very well. Uh, the Lou's have never seen so smart, and I think the Kofan will greatly appreciate their efforts. Mel's shower block, uh, being given another coat uh, to beautify it. Uh, these showers are really pretty effective. We're very lucky to have them. Uh, la, 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 la. This is the, the damp back wall of the shower block and as you can see it's covered in plant growth and absolutely saturated. This is because the water has been coming off the flat concrete roof here when the tank's been overflowing and on the, with the rainfall it's just been coming straight over the edge and down this wall. And apparently the Siona went north and the Kofan settled in this area. Some time later, Carlos uh, found this pot uh, on the far side of the river from the present village of Zabalo. Uh, and it was encased in, the, in a larger pot, which you can see behind it, and nearby was another smaller one. Uh, it is a quite in quite unique condition. The paint is still uh, visible, and there's an intricate design upon it, which I think probably has some meaning, which is beyond us. Uh, it's difficult to say exactly what period this was made in, whether it's modern or ancient, but we will have to show this to uh, experts when we get the photographs back to Quito. It's 10.3 centimeters uh, at the top, um, across the top, the, the diameter of the entrance. Um, and then this is 44 centimeters, and the the uh, circumference of the rather irregular uh, lower part is 54 and the height uh, is 24 centimeters and the nose is quite interesting it's got two little uh, specks it's obviously a bird um, there's probably been a design around the front and this is interesting. now on this side here you've got this very intricate design which must be symbolic in some way it's demonstrating a sort of splendid blowpipe um, from which he fires a dart uh, usually tipped in the form of curare uh, mainly for hunting birds he also has an old 16 bore shotgun but as he says, the cartridges are very expensive, so he prefers to use the blowpipe for birds. Um, normally he shoots about 11 small birds for a meal for his family, and this has a range of probably about uh, 20 meters, um, effectively. And he's, he's obviously a very experienced uh, shot. These wax has been blackened with something, and he actually has a crude form of, of, of back sight and front sight uh, on it. Proceeding up the Zabalo River, running north um, on a route recce to see if this is a place that we can bring or suggest uh, eco tourists can, can come uh, brought by the uh, uh, Kofan. We're also looking at wildlife. Olivia is taking uh, water samples to test the purity. Uh, it's a cool morning, been a bit of rain in the world. Why your head, right, boy? And it's the most curious looking bird with funny uh, crests sticking up all over the place.
Ah, not a piece more. That's right. Taking the taking off. It's the just a drop water, and you look down at it. Before it was before the just a drop water was yellow. We purified it. It was yellow. There were bits in it. I was drinking it. Now look, it's completely clear. Yeah, it's nice. It's fantastic, and it's not that yellow colour. A bit. You do have some. Cheese, you have. Ah, well, we've seen lots of uh, turtles, uh, macaws, uh, kingfishers, yes, oh, monkeys of varying sorts. Yes. Uh, what else? Lots of birds whose names I have now forgotten. Okay. Very pretty. It's talking. Oh. Oh. Kayla, wow. did you got it? Did you first fish in Ecuador? I did. Huh. You have got the fish talks. A catfish. I don't know, big fish, huh? It's a catfish. Okay, Olivia, um, can you explain quite what you're doing now? <laughs> I've taken a sample from the mouth of the Zabalo River um, and I'm just putting it in a methanol solvent before putting it inside of. Um, uh, new fluorescence, um, call it the TD500, which tests for uh, petroleum hydrocarbons, uh, just to, to get an idea of how much, um, if there is any um, petroleum or crude oil contamination within these waters. Um, from all signs, though, it's, it's probably um, quite clean. Because so far, most of the waters around here have been very clean. Um, there's been reports of um, exploration up this river but I'm not sure whether there's actually been any any oil wells or anything too contaminative up this way. We've got uh, school books and rulers and pencils, colouring pencils and um, paper for the school and we've got medicines here. We've got one, two, we've got five boxes of medicine, two boxes of school books and some chalk. Es un gusto venir a cumplir nuestras promesas. Cada uno de nosotros ha trabajado por un año para recoger dinero y poder comprar las medicinas. The military map and the map of the country show a big lake just south of Zancudo village. Is that not worth exploring? Well, I'm told that it's because it's so close to Zancudo, it's a sort of playground for the local people. And therefore the chances of any animals being down there are pretty remote. Fair enough. So the lake that we're actually going to is whereabouts? It's um, two hours sailing from Zancudo uh, on the uh, Ecuadorian side. And last night you said we've got to go to a couple of uh, through a couple of checkpoints or something. Um, what's yeah, all that about? What's all that about, John? Well, because we're on the border, the border runs down the middle of the river. And uh, you have to apparently check with the Ecuadorian checkpoint and again at the uh, uh, Peruvian one. Because the border, we're actually just sort of driving along the border. Uh, there is also another checkpoint, which is this side of Zancuda, where we checked in the other day. We've just passed the um, Peruvian military post uh, and the Ecuadorian military post. And slightly to our surprise, uh, we turned eastward. Um, I was expecting the lake Legato to be west of the main river, but uh, according to our guide who's been here before, uh, we're heading to another lake, which is in fact to the east. So we're now moving up a small river. Uh, the right-hand bank is Peru, and the left-hand one is Ecuador.
Zankudu, uh, where we've been giving medical and dental aid and also some school books uh, for the little school here. Uh, people are very pleasant. They're rather more developed in many ways than the people of Zabalo. Uh, masses of concrete seem to be used, but yet their uh, school uh, toilets and showers are in the most appalling condition. They asked us originally if we could do something there, but I'm afraid the uh, um, damage that had been done to the fittings was so great that it would have taken us more time than we had. And also, we would have needed to bring special fittings with us from Quito. So we weren't able to do that, but we've done everything else for them. And, uh, okay. No, no, I think we're done. I think we're done. Yeah. And many thanks to Carol, our translator, who without yeah. his help, we should not have been able to manage the change. Well today. done, Carol. Thank you, Carol. The uh, Ecuadorian military post, Monte Cristi, uh, on the border with uh, Peru, uh, near Zancudo. And uh, here, Joel is dispensing uh, reading glasses to one of the soldiers. Okay. Bueno. Que si se les puede colocar. Está bien. Ahí sí le vemos. Sí. Sí. Un poco más lejos. Sí. Un poco más claro. Sí. Ok, perfecto. Okay. Fast cut. Wow. Oh, I got that. Did you get that? Yeah. Here we go again. He's pulling. He's up. Keep it rock, rocking a bit as well. Keep it rock rocking, it. everybody. Rock it and pull. Heave up. Heave up. Nice rock going there. Good someone gets going. Attempting to catch a piranha on this lake uh, with multiple lines and lots of hope.
We encountered a problem with the uh, storage tank on top of this tower because a previous pump had obviously put a lot of sludge up into the tank and this was getting through into our filters and into the pipes that we'd put in and blocking them up. The only way to solve it was to drain the tank but the drain plug at the bottom of the tank required a special sort of spanner which we didn't have. Very luckily uh, Simon Brown, who's the great DIY expert, found this piece of metal um, on a building site at Zankudu and nicked it away and cut himself a spanner with which we were able to open the drain plug and flush out all the sediment, close it up again, and lo and behold, we now have water coming through the system. We are now heading upriver to uh, Kuya, Kuya Bello Beach where we shall change into some boats from the Kuya Bello Lodge which is owned by Louis Hernandez and from here we will wind our way up the Kuya Bello River uh, taking about four hours to reach the lodge where we will be hopefully uh, undertaking some wildlife sighting trips uh, and staying the night for We're now, um, now heading up the Queerbino River and um, it's about four or five hours from Flyer uh, uh, to Queerbino to the Queerbino Lodge. The um, Kofan have now come together in a mingya, which is when the community um, form a group and come and work together for the benefit of the community. And the purpose of this morning's mingya is to cut the grass over the football pitch. So there is the uh, president, the chief on the right, uh, and members of his uh, village. Uh, four of them at the moment, I hope more are coming later because there's quite a lot of grass to cut if they are to cover the whole football pitch. This afternoon uh, the Kofan have uh, produced all their handicrafts in the handicraft fair uh, which were invited to buy uh, souvenirs to take home um, and uh, they've got some quite uh, interesting uh, little ornaments. Uh, prominent amongst them are a peccary teeth and also the jaws of piranha fixed to necklaces. Uh, most of these things are made uh, as a local material, uh, I see very little sign of any plastic or beads, a lot of um, uh, natural beads and natural seeds are there. I trust they get to trust them for one. And also, of course, stringware such as bags and purses uh, and wooden ornaments of uh, birds made in balsa wood. There's a great assortment, reasonably priced in dollars, with the lady's name uh, attached on a little label to uh, each particular necklace or item. This is one of the ways that the Kofan uh, makes some money. They have no other way, really, other than ecotourism, and it's hopeful that our efforts will increase the number of ecotourists who come here and uh, take an interest in what is happening. Uh, visit the various wildlife sites and see how the Kofan live. Don Mauricio, the oldest of the community, Luis Ventura, who is the actual president of the community, 
auntie son andres They'll take the hindmost on their drive Till all their wheels swell kites belive A bit like drums Then old Goodman mace to rise Be thank it hums Is there any of his French ragout? Or olio with slur of sow? Or fricassee would make us pew We perfect scunner Looks down we sneering scornful view On sick at dinner Poor deal. See him owe his trash, as feckless as a withered rash, his spindle shank a deed whiplash, his neve a knit. Through bloody flood or field to dash, oh how unfit. But mark the rustic, haggis fed, the trembling earth resounds, but if ye wish her grateful prayer, gee her a haggis. Coming yet for all that man to man they would shall brothers be for all. 